privileged to rise to speak to the first reading of the excise and excise equivalent duties table tobacco products amendment bill. As a former doctor and ex-smoker, um, I think there's a courageous and bold step by the government. I'd like to congratulate the Minister Turia and the National Cabinet, Party Cabinet, for agreeing to this bill to pass through the House. I'm delighted it has the support of other colleagues in the House. Colleagues, you'd be interested to know I started smoking when I was 16, and I stopped eventually when I was 30. I smoked through university, I smoked through medical school, I smoked through the hospital wards, and um, stopped by the time I was a general practitioner. I had can cancerous lungs and diseased lungs paraded in front of me when I was a medical student, um, and when I was on the hospital wards, I saw emphysemic patients and patients dying of lung cancer. It didn't stop me from smoking. That's what addiction does to you. I turned a blind eye. Of course, this all happened around the 1970s. There were some warnings seeping through coming to the surface, but being an addict, you ignore those and you carry on puffing away. They made me slightly uneasy, but I still carried on. And of course, um, by the time I got to general practice, I had sort of decided it was time I should give up. Um, and fortunately, nicotine gum had come onto the market. Up till then, it was just really cold turkey and that was it. And I'd already failed on one attempt with cold turkey. And to me, nicotine gum made perfect sense. You take the active ingredient of the addictive um, substance, which is nicotine, and give it to the person, you wean them off it, just like you do with a drug addict, with methadone. It made perfect sense. I took the nicotine gum and it worked with me. Of course, um, it made me more proactive as a, as a general practitioner when I had my patients in front of me who were smokers. I could relate to them. I knew what addiction was like. I knew what this substance was like and what it could do to your mind. I know comments were made by the Honourable Act King to say that a lot of people are just social smokers. They aren't addicted. Well, I would say that I think most people are, who smoke are addicted. There are a few who are social smokers and can stop like a drop of the hat, but they are few and far between. I think most people are addicted. So I would be very, very active in t talking to my patients who are smokers about, look, this, this smoking will catch up with you some, here, some way, somehow in the future if you don't stop. And that is true. Smoking harms every single organ in the body. We've heard tonight it's responsible for up to 5,000 deaths per year, and that includes heart disease, cerebral vascular disease, lung disease, lung cancer. It damages the blood vessels, essentially, and particularly the small blood vessels, so it affects the vessels in the feet, so it causes peripheral vascular disease, or the eye, and so on. It, it affects every single organ. Ash has made a comment in one of their fact sheets which says at least 50% of regular smokers will be killed by their addiction. And on average, they lose 14 years of quality of life. That is a staggering statistic. 50%, half of regular smokers will die from smoking, and they lose quality years. That is a staggering statistic. And, of course, we know that Māori are overrepresented in the stats. Once again, congratulations to Minister Turia for pushing this through and to our ministers who have supported her. The cost, there's a cost of smoking to society, to New Zealand, to New Zealand as a whole. In 2005, it was estimated that smoking cost almost $2 billion, and that was in lost production through early death, morbidity and illness from smoking directly and from health care costs. Um, fortunately, I had nicotine gum when I decided it was time I had to practice what I preached and gave up. Now there are many nicotine replacement options available for those who want to give up. There's gum, there's transdermal patches, there's sublingual tablets, inhalers and nasal spray. And of course there's also subsidised pharmaceutical treatments. And I'm sure there are a lot more out there that do need to be funded and this may be the catalyst for that to happen. In total, $57 million have been put this year into sensation ceasing products and organisations who help those who want to stop smoking. The research does prove that if you increase this, the price of tobacco, that is a single, the single most effective way to get people to stop or stop or not even start in the first place. And so this bill will increase um, the excise of tobacco in three steps of 10% over the next two years. And of course we know that loose tobacco is, has been much lower traditionally and that will also uh, increase by 14% to bring it into line with cigarettes. This is not a revenue gathering exercise, absolutely not. This is about, as the Honourable Ruth Dyson said, it's about health promotion, 
It's about changing lives and it's about saving lives. I want to acknowledge the very important work of Quitline and the work that they do. I expect they will be very much busier as a result of this bill. Um, you, uh, people can phone or text and they speak to an advisor, they get a quit pack, a quit card where they can get subsidised nicotine replacement from the chemists. This is a wonderful step. It actually was the most logical step for this government to take. We know that the ban on smoking in bars and restaurants has been widely accepted. There's been a change of mood. People accept that. Most smokers now aren't in denial, like I was for those 15 years when I smoked. Most, cigarettes, most people would accept that cigarettes are harmful to them. They cause illness and death. And I hope, the hope is, the sincere hope is from this parliament tonight that by increasing the price, we will see people stop smoking and stop young ones from starting smoking in the first place. Mr Speaker, I'm delighted to speak to this first reading. It's a wonderful step by this government. Congratulations to Minister Turia. I commend this bill to the House. I call the Honourable Jim Anderton.